when you make these mega projects, which often involve a block or two, etc., you're doing two things. You are eliminating little streets, little squares, little messy, little, little government office or modest, but it is a bit of your home if you are a modest income, whatever. And you are killing the street. We need to think about earlier moments when people were owned, who then was considered even to be human. And it is in that understanding that they then forge a language of human rights. So I think the other way of thinking about who owns the city, which of course has been made apparent by Black Lives Matter, is the unfinished work of civil rights. And who even gets to be a person? I would say the most uh, significant and the most uh, unsettling is the challenge to property rights through various kinds of public space activism. Public space is never fixed. It's constantly being redefined. We need that language, mass incarceration, abuse of rights, imprisonment that is unwarranted, etc., etc., because that's the, the language of the law, the language of contractual arrangements. But is there something deeper happening? All of these issues about, about the challenges, the homeless, right, the tent cities, all these things, they're, the tent cities are not far from here, right? They're, they're not invisible, but they are invisible, right? We've made it easy for them to be so familiar that they're not noticed, right? They're just, it's just, you know, your brain, your brain naturally clears out things that are so familiar that, that you know, and you know what it means for you, right? And, and that's what a lot of these things have become. And so it becomes more difficult to unpack them and to really diagnose in, in meaningful ways. I think you're allowed to be, if you're, uh, say, a young black man, you're allowed to be in many spaces, but you're not there in the same, uh, you don't have the same rights to that space. You're there on sufferance and you have to actually almost um, prove that you should be there or could be there. One of the things I, I thought was really note, noteworthy about when you talk about people that live in cities, they have an ability to say, we are here. There isn't one linear trajectory for something like Central Park. There isn't one linear trajectory for increasing in in income inequality because it's not inevitable. We can see That's moments right. at which it yeah. was different, and I think paying attention to the historical conjunctures at which potentialities exist, to be able to seize that moment, even if that moment lasts only for this law, is really crucial. I do think, though, that as conditions change and different coalitions are able to make different rules, they're going to skew those rules in their, to their advantage to the extent that they can, and we need to be sensitive to those possibilities as well. So, that, so, you, so that's going to be true in an India context, that's going to be true in a South African context, it's going to be true in an Egyptian context, right? All these places are, are facing the same challenge.